As you can see, we're now at 12k energy credits and we haven't actually gone down any minerals. Hmm, this is rather interesting, Spiff. Might some say that perhaps the market is potentially a little bit broken at the moment? Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit and today we are playing Stellaris, an absolutely wonderful game created by Paradox Interactive. I know, isn't it glorious? Now, this is a fun little game, which is fun for all of the family, and it can cater for almost all gameplay styles, be that purging the Xenos, purging the Xenos, or purging the Xenos with a cup of tea. But of course, what am I doing here today in the game? Oh, and look at that, I've titled it Infinite Money again. Oh my, oh my, oh my. I did that in the Civilization video, and what did we end up with? Oh, that's right, we ended up with infinite money in free units. But what about today? Where's Spiff going to take it today? Well, today Spiff is instead going to show you an infinite money game break, along with one of my favorite cheesiest strategies that Stellaris has to offer. So yes, I'm very excited to demonstrate this game for you all today. Ah, oh, so ladies and gentlemen, I guess it's time we dive right into a fair bit of Stellaris. So make sure you've got your cup of tea with you. You sat down, you are very, very comfortable. Maybe you've got the fireplace on. Maybe you're watching this video with your favorite pet or family member. But most importantly, you've given your Union Jack that you have flying above your PC a quick wave and it's time we dive into this video. As always, if you enjoy what you're seeing here today, ladies and gentlemen, then make sure Sure to give the video a like as at the end of the day it really will help me out but of course where do we begin well we always begin by creating a brand new species when it comes to designing a species we need to build a species around our plan today today we're going to be playing a very special race of cheesers who know where all of the exploits are in this game and would love to just break it so naturally we need an aggressive evil looking deceitful race who look like they're definitely going to go behind your back and then go on to destroy the entire galaxy. Oh, those evil monsters. Of course I'm talking about the butterfly people. Look at them. My goodness. That's our butterfly people organized. Now we just need to give them an actual name. Well, for those of you that aren't aware, we're going to be playing a hive mind. So it makes sense that we come up with a name which is all about inclusivity and groups of people. I've got it, ladies and gentlemen. It's the community, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. They are a community built on the foundations of enjoying tea, just like us. You see, this might be our final form. Actually, I hope our final form is not butterflies. I hope our final form is whatever I can find on the stock photo search for standard British man. Yes, that will be our final form, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, we need a ship prefix. This goes in front of all of our ships. So, for example, in the UK, we have HMS standing for Her Majesty's Ship. But for the community, they are going to instead have TEA. This, of course, stands for T Extraction Automobile. And when it comes to the traits of the community, we're naturally gonna go for rapid breeders, who are non-adaptive, but very intelligent. Because whilst there was a chance that we could have gone for, I don't know, ingenious and get extra energy credits, which are the currency in this game, I just felt... Well, uh, it's probably not the best idea. There are much better ways of getting currency in this game. For our home world, it's going to naturally be called Tea Prime and be a continental world because I presume that is probably the best environment to grow tea in. And the star will be known as Spiff. And this is where we get to have some fun. You see, when it comes to picking ethics, there are some wonderful things we can do. But alas, we're gonna go for a hive mind. We don't need any of these other ethics. Look at them, they're really boring. So here we have it. We are a hive mind. It's great mostly due to the fact that we have an extra 25% pop growth speed. And at the end of the day, whew, pop growth speed is everything in this game. And when it comes to our traits, we're going for Devouring Swarm and Divided Attention. Devouring Swarm is a very interesting gameplay mechanic in that they cannot technically engage in diplomacy. However, they can still do the one thing that I need them to do for infinite gold. So for that reason, we're playing a Devouring Swarm for all of that crazy increased army damage and ship cost reduction. And and when it comes to our empire name, we will be known as the Commune of Tea. And here we have it, I've designed the perfect flag for the Commune of Tea. It's not quite a hammer and sickle, but it's close enough in my opinion. It's a robot arm and a pick of some kind. Right, and here we have it, I think we are in a perfect situation to prepare for our wonderful game as the Commune of Tea. Now, normally in Paradox games, they're actually perfectly fine with you cheating. However, I've decided to turn on Iron Man mode. This disables access to the console and allows the game to be eligible for achievements. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do 
here today is perfectly accepted by the game developers, so nothing is wrong. We're just playing with the absolute default settings. It's going to be very interesting to see where we take the game. One thing I will do to save myself quite a lot of time is to reduce the tech tradition cost down to 0.25%. This basically just makes the games faster, which is exactly what I want to do, because as fun as it is to sit through, my goodness, 20 hours of Stellaris, I am quite happy just to, you know, sit for about 40 cups of tea's worth of Stellaris. Oh, what a good tea it is today. Thank you, Yorkshire Tea, for this lovely milky goodness. And I think you know what? It's time we dive right into the game. Here we have it. We're in the game as the Commune of Tea. Oh, it's going to be very interesting to see where we go. Now we need to set our physics, society, and engineering research. For physics, we might as well go for the increased physics research speed. For biology, we're going to go for the extra unity. For engineering, we're going for the increased minerals. And of course, in our capital, there are a few important things that we need to produce in our empire. And no, they are not alloys. Who could need any of those? Instead, we're going to focus entirely on building minerals. And then once we have a lot of minerals, we'll be building resource silos. Trust me, there's method to this madness. So yes, early on in this game, we're going to want to build up as much mineral production as possible and generally just have a large population. The reason why I've selected a hive mind over all other species is that hive minds at the moment are pretty broken. The reason being that they can grow faster than any other species. And in the current update, having a faster growth rate is everything, as more growth it means more population, and more population means more resources. So yes, everything hinges upon a large and fast growing population. So for that reason, we're going to go to our policy selection here and change our food policy to nutritional plentitude for the extra 33% growth speed. My goodness, that is lovely. And our first tradition can be selected. Now there's quite a few lovely traditions out there for us to grab, but my favorite one to grab immediately is the expansion one. Mostly due to the fact that it increases our colony development speed. And if there's one thing I love, it's a fast growing colony. Huzzah to the British Empire. Oh wait, no, we're not playing the British Empire, are we? Well, nonetheless, we need the expansion civic. And now for our society research, we're going to try and rush unlocking the wonderful eco simulation for increased food from farmers and it unlocks food subsidies. Mmm, very exciting. Because at the moment, as you can see, our food is running a little low. In fact, some might say it's worth going onto the marketplace to buy some. We've managed to unlock pop speed growth plus 10%. Lovely. So now if we're to go onto our planet and take a look at our population, we can see that our growth speed is at 6.09 a month, which is certainly not something that you'd normally run into only one year into the game. As I say, ladies and gentlemen, this cheesy strategy is perfectly balanced. And for engineering, we're going to start researching powered exoskeletons. The reason why, it's increased minerals from jobs. Basically, all of our flappy butterflies are going to be going around with really bulky arms, like almost as if you've seen a seagull with arms, they're going to become that. And they're going to use this really powerful strength to lift massive crates of tea around. It's those huge crates of tea which are going to power this economy, trust me. Now our first system that we've completely surveyed is the Ugizmism system. That's going to have to be renamed. It's absolutely perfect for us because it has nine minerals inside it. Mmm, that is going to fuel our economy very nicely. Ah, and here's the other research that I was looking for. The genome mapping. This increases pop growth speed by another 10%. Mmm, hang on a second, Spiff. If population is everything and you suddenly appear to be growing at a ridiculous speed, is something wrong with the game? No. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, everything is fine. Now, this galaxy is actually really, really big, and so it will take us quite a long time to expand across the entire thing. However, we have the advantage of being a devouring swarm, in that quite literally, everything is food for us. So I can't wait to see what happens when we stumble across our first civilization. But of course, where is our infinite money going to come from? Well, I'm afraid at the moment, we can't have access to it, I know. We need to wait around and be patient before we can unlock infinite money. Infinite money doesn't just fall into your lap, you do actually have to work for it. But of course, once you've achieved it, just about anything's possible after that. And now that we've completed the expansion civic, we've managed to unlock our first ascension perk. These are a list of perks which allow us to ascend into the realms of just general godhood. Some late game ones include hive worlds, which are absolutely broken. Sorry, I mean perfectly balanced. And also galactic wonders, allowing you to build ridiculous things like matter decompression 
progresses. They've actually managed to balance some of these mega structures rather well. There's one thing they forgot to balance when releasing this update. And don't worry, I'll show that off to you today. But for our first Ascendant perk, we are naturally going to go for Technological Ascendancy, just for that base 10% research speed. Lovely. And lovely, we finally discovered, oh, the single greatest research in physics technology. It's Automated Exploration Protocols. Reason why it allows you to unlock automatic exploration instead of having to manually click your science ships through. Hey, you've done this system, now come do this system. We can hopefully eventually just press a button and they will just go out into the universe and do it all themselves. This saves you so much micromanagement. Why is it even considered a research thing? It's just so tedious. Oh well, still our devs. I love you. Please don't ban me. Now one of the fun other features we can get is in the edict section. We can activate the drone campaign. This outright costs us 500 food, which is quite a lot, but it's going to increase pop growth speed by 20%. Away it goes. Ah, oh, perfectly balanced. Now if we hop onto our capital and go to the population section, you can see that we're growing at 6.99 a month. Hmm, that's very good. Most normal civilizations around six years into the game will probably be growing around four. So yes, you can probably see where I'm going to be going with this. And for our next ascension perk, we're going to go for discovery. And finally, automatic exploration has been researched. I no longer need to micromanage when all these very annoying science ships. Away you go. Release yourselves into this world and enjoy it. And we can also grab cloning for an extra 10% pop growth speed. Ooh, this is getting very exciting. We've achieved 40 population out of our empire alone. Now all we need to do is try and settle ourselves onto a new planet. Because at the moment, we really need to expand our colonial outreach. Seven years into the game and we don't even have a colony up and running. My oh my oh my, we can hardly say that we descend from the British. Oh, we've discovered an absolutely big go away monster which is not going to allow us to get anywhere near it. We've discovered the matriarch. This is an absolutely massive space whale and we have no chance of defeating it at the moment. But hey, that's our first leviathan we've discovered in the game. Now we just need to make sure we stay away from it. Oh, we've had our first contact with a lovely little trading AI. These are kind of like the city states in Civilization 6. The only issue is as a devouring swarm, to us they are simply prey. Nothing more, nothing less. Ah, oh, first colonizable planet. Lovely. It's Gomesia 1. To be honest, that sounds a little bit like Nomesia. Hmm. You've been gnomed. Ah, oh, there you go. Just a little bit of a brief gnoming there. Just to keep you on your toes. You never know when you're going to be gnomed in this world. It's 2019. So here we have. We have Gomesia 2. Now, what is this planet like? Ah, immediately we have an issue. It's got high gravity, meaning everyone we put on this planet is going to develop into big chungus over here. Nonetheless, it's still a planet which can be colonized. And so we probably should grab it as at the end of the day it's just an area to put more of our population. And now that Gamesia is now within our space we can finally do the most important thing which is to send over a team to go and colonel rename this system to Nomesia. Bam. The most important job is done. It's Nomesia and Nomesia 2. Okay now we can go colonize it. Ah, oh, here we are. We've discovered them. It's the Firel Collective, and they've immediately closed their borders. What do they not like about me? Oh, that's right. Minus 1,000 Devouring Swarm. Hmm, they're going to hate me for the entire game. Even though they themselves are a hive mind, some people are so difficult to please. And at the moment, we're about 50% complete on our colonization of Nomesia Prime. As soon as we get this set up and running, we should be able to immediately begin spawning pops out at a ridiculous speed. On our home planet, for example, we're ready at 7.29. Very balanced. That's somewhere around one new population on this planet per year, which in this game is an absolute ton. Oh, and our drone campaign edict has just expired. What a shame. Good thing we can just immediately reactivate that for an extra 20% growth speed. Oh, we've discovered a wreckage of the Feral Collective, the empire to our north. This wreckage contains 300 minerals. Now if we grab these 300 minerals, they're ours forever, but it will displease them. Mm, we need those minerals. Ah, oh, we don't really, but I just don't like the Feral Collective, so why not? And bam, Nemesia Prime is set up as our first colony. Oh, apparently it's come to their attention that a supply ship went missing coming near us, and apparently... They think we did it, so a supply ship, what supply ship? Or we could return the supplies. I didn't see any supply ship. Uh, did you in the comment section see any supply ships? I didn't see any supply ships. I don't know what they're on about. Look at that. They can't even fly as effectively as us butterfly people. So much more majestic. Oh, good news, everyone. We've discovered our first primitive civilization on the Daphne planet. It's a civilization currently in the heat of their renaissance age. And there's 12 of them on this planet. Oh, that is great. Now, what can we do? 
do with these 12 populations? Well, we can go to war. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. They have something that we want, so we're going to get it. What's that? Well, it's mostly that they're carbon-based life forms, which means their bodies can be used for food. So that's exactly what we'll be using them for. We finally finished the Discovery Tradition, which allows us to grab our second Ascension perk. We're naturally going to go for the One Vision for the increased monthly unity. That's going to be very important. We've discovered another AI empire. This time it's the Sakit Autocracy. Once again, they're not very friendly towards us, mostly due to the fact that our entire empire is based around eating them, but nonetheless I'm sure we can one day be good friends, and by that I mean wipe them out from existence. And for our next tradition we're going to go for Prosperity. Oh, and we've discovered the Automated Dreadnought. My oh my oh my, check out this thing. Look at the size of that thing. An absolute unit, some might say. Oh, and we've managed to grab our first proper primitive world, the lovely region of Dalfni. Now we could build an observation post here, but realistically speaking, that is not what we want to do. We're going to be grabbing our fleet over here, and we're going to be sending it round to the planet. And of course, we're also going to need to start building up an army. Oh, we've come across one of the loveliest event chains this entire game has. The Lost Amoeba event chain, which is going to give us access to a cute little space amoeba. And we've finally recruited our army. These are just three basic units, and that is all. But we need to give them a general. So naturally, we're going to choose a glory seeker for that increased morale and damage. Oh yes. General Turan, lead my men to glory. Oh, lovely. Our space amoeba has finally grown up and he's fully fledged. So now we need to give him a name. What a great idea. I think we should go for Bubbles. Of course. Bubbles the space amoeba. Look at it. This single space amoeba is 514. I mean, this one space amoeba is more powerful than our entire fleet. And with our existing fleet that's floating around here, we're going to take them and we're going to have them bombard this planet. Away we go. They might be in the middle of their renaissance age, but at the moment they're busy getting completely bombarded. Now that the invasion is over, their planet is currently going for a bit of a culture shock. In fact, they're not even really too certain what's going to happen to them, and so naturally they've become undesirables. At the moment, these guys are completely and utterly buggered. They've been marked as non-desirables, meaning that they're going to be used as food. Yes, food. That's all they can be used for now. Now, at the moment, as you might have seen, our empire is facing an issue. We're losing 15 energy credits a turn. Energy credits are everything in this game, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to find a way of making a lot more of them. So we're just going to sell some apples, because at the end of the day we don't need this many apples, so that we're up to a nice round 2000. We're also going to sell a few of these rare crystals, because at the moment we're just not using them. And whilst we're at it, we'll also sell 250 alloys. There we go. Now if we come over here to our minerals, we're going to sell 5000 minerals for 3500. And away the minerals go. Now we're then going to buy these minerals back for 1950. So the minerals have been purchased. But that allows us to sell the minerals back again Again for 3,500. So we go up 3,500, but then to buy back the 5,000 minerals that we just sold, it's only going to cost us 2,000. Wabam, 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 wabam. As you can see, we're now at 12k energy credits and we haven't actually gone down any minerals. Hmm, this is rather interesting, Spiff. Might some say that perhaps the market is potentially a little bit broken at the moment? Well, some could say that. I alternatively like to use the term it's completely and utterly buggered. And it gets even better when we buy 10,000 minerals and then just do the same. Because you can sell for 11,000 and buy back for 3,900. Sell for 11, buy back for 3,900. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how to properly do trade in this game. But of course, we can make it a lot better. We're just going to need to have more resource storage locations. Because at the moment, we don't have enough mineral storage to really turn this into a ridiculous profit. Luckily, in our brand new fringe planet over here, this is going to be the perfect place to whap down a resource silo. Away we go. Oh, I do enjoy this game. Is it not perfectly balanced like all things should be? Thanos really would be proud. No, all we really need to work on is just making sure we have enough storage space in this entire empire for what we have planned. As soon as we've got that nailed, everything is going to be jazzy. I'm wondering if we actually try and go for the skate autocracy. These guys are rather impressive, boasting a mighty one planet. And that is all. They've also managed to successfully rival everyone else, meaning people won't particularly mind if I attack them. Now, of course, to attack them, we're going to need a larger fleet. So we're going to find our main fleet over here. We're going to add in a few little destroyers. Yes. Oh, what a shame. There's only one of the undesirables left on this planet. Oh, and they're gone. <laughs> so there we go. We've just tapped this planet dry of all of the food it gave us. Very nice. Now, many of you might be wondering that probably the best way to build up a good economy is to make sure that you have a lot of diversified buildings going 
going, for example on your capital planet, making sure that you're able to produce some of the more advanced resources like alloys. However, as we know with this wonderful exploit, with infinite gold there's suddenly actually no need to build alloys of your own, when you can just use the infinite gold that you have to buy more alloys. So for that reason we're just going to be building resource silos for that increased storage capacity, as the only thing holding us back from having unlimited gold is our ability to store it. Now that's the one thing that makes this exploit different to Civilization 6. In Civ 6 they don't care how much money you have. There we go, and now that our storage capacity is at 22,000, we can once again cap off our energy credits by selling 5,000 minerals and then buying them back for 2,000. Sell for 3,000, buy for 2,000. Lovely. And now we're up to 20,000 energy credits. But of course, we just stay completely stuck at the top of our energy credits cap. If only we had more storage capacity. Oh, I just need more storage. Now, I would like to build up our fleet, but of course to do so, we're going to need a ridiculous amount of alloys. 2,000 to be exact. Now we can't afford alloys, but what we can do is buy an absolute ton off of them off of the market. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to buy 2,500 alloys. Well, bam. That's going to drop our energy credits by quite a lot, but don't worry, we can count balance it by selling some minerals, buying them back, and selling some minerals, buying them back. Let's sell, say, I don't know, 10,000 minerals, and buy them back for 2,600. Yes, this seems balanced. You sell the minerals for 11,000, and then you buy them back for 2,600. Yep, I can't see anything wrong with this gameplay mechanic. So there we go. Now we have 2,000 alloys, and our money basically hasn't changed at all, which will allow us to just completely reinforce our fleet for free. Thank you very much, Dolaris. I do love this balance. As we can see, our fleet is filling out quite nicely. We've got two destroyers, a couple of rebel cruisers, and of course a massive space amoeba. And now that we're considering war, I think it naturally only makes sense that we're going to start going down the supremacy tradition. Mostly so that I can grab the overwhelming force option here, which is going to increase our ship fire rate by 10%. This is quite a ludicrous upgrade, because if you face off against anyone that doesn't have this, they just can't win. Buying alloys is so very expensive. It's a good thing we have infinite money though, because we can just buy 1,250 alloys, and of course that's set us back down to 8.6k, but don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we can simply sell 10,000 minerals and buy them all back. Wabam, and wabam, there we go. Ah, and we've unlocked our first civic, which allows us to add a brand new civic to our government. Now, of course, we can't reform out of being a devouring swarm, because we've chosen that life, but we can add in some wonderful new possibilities. So hey, reforming our government to add even more ships to our arsenal, and we've just grabbed that increased ship fire rate. Suddenly, our ships have become much more powerful. And some interesting news from our lovely science ship. This science has just paid a visit to Sol Free, also known as Earth. Earth is currently in the late medieval age. However, after visiting the planet, the science ship flew back up to the skies and discovered that they've managed to grab a beast from the planet. I've no idea what it is, but apparently we're going to need to assemble a rescue force to save them. Right, it's time to summon the fleet. The only issue is we have a thousand days to do it in. Can the fleet even get over here in a thousand days? Oh, they can just. We're going to do the mineral exploit just a bit more so that we can buy a few alloys. So here we go, we're going to buy 2,500 alloys for 20 20 grand. Ouch, that's a lot of money. And then we're going to sell some minerals and buy them back. Sell for 8,000, buy for 3,000, and rinse and repeat until we hit our cap. And here we have it, our fleet is in to save the day. And this one ship which for some reason has managed to capture a wild beast. If I had to run a guess, I would say it was probably some kind of tea-eating monster. Now I've discovered something rather interesting. The Sakit Autocracy, which has never really been a big fan of us, is now considered pathetic, which allows us to declare war on them for the simple goal of just absorption, due to the fact that we're a devouring swarm. You know what, I think we might as well. Our fleet is apparently much, much better than theirs, so we're going to naturally throw ourselves right in there. What's our aim? Well, our aim is to basically take everything. So we come into our first system, and naturally we engage the outpost, and we're going to completely and utterly destroy it. Success! And now it's just on to the next system. Also, we have finished the supremacy focus, which allows us to decide our war doctrine, and naturally we've gone for the no retreat option. How very Russian. It's basically basically means we can never run from combat, but it does mean our ships are going to put up one hell of a fight. Our entire fleet has jumped into their home world, and naturally they've left it entirely undefended, allowing us to take out their station with relative ease. There are 43 pops on this planet, making it very valuable to grab hold of, because as soon as we grab this entire planet, they get converted into food. So we're going to land our army, and the battle will now begin. Lovely. The planet is now ours. And they all get turned into food. Which is great, isn't it? Ah, now the war's getting exciting. We have our first 
battle about to happen. As you can tell, I've been very kind, and I'm only sailing a fleet of roughly about 4k into a fleet of 1. Yep, this is going to be a perfectly balanced battle. Oh, AI. What have you signed yourself up for? And that is a glorious battle with absolutely no survivors. A massive success for our fleet. At the moment, our food stockpile is going absolutely insane, for the reason that this entire planet here is currently having 45 pops be disassembled into food. Now, so I'm going to take our fleet and we're going to actually go and finish this war. It's time we actually send our armies along with our fleets straight into the enemy space, grab all of their planets, peace out, and take their entire empire all in one go. And we're almost ready to go for the complete absorption war goal. We just need to take out their final two planets and then we should be good. That is the entire end of their empire and everything they once controlled now belongs to us. Goodness, I just realised that our empire is a bit of a wiggly mess. There is absolutely no coherent border. Now that we've got our massive fleet on this border, it's time we go to war. Sorry for our collective, we're just going to easily breeze on through and grab all of your planets. Oh my goodness, our entire fleet is chasing down a colony ship which is trying to escape the system. Pretty sure this counts as civilian casualties and goes against the Geneva Convention, but I guess when in space there is no Geneva Convention. Right, we've bombarded to such an extent there are no armies left on this planet. I think it's time we just land our army, and I do believe this is the end of the war. There's absolutely no one defending this entire system now. So that's ours, and that's the end of their entire empire. So you have it ladies and gentlemen, two cheesy little exploits. The first one of which is to simply be a hive mind because of their broken growth speed and the second one of course which is to exploit the market by pausing the game and just buying and selling minerals over and over again. Sell for 11,000, buy back for 3,000. You're basically creating money out of thin air and of course this works with basically all the resources in the game. You have a load of exotic gases lying around, well that's fine, sell them for 11,000, buy them back for 3,000. Just about any resource can be used in this case. If you've enjoyed this exploit and you want to give it a try then feel free to do so. If you've enjoyed the video then make sure to give it a like and if you're new here and you might want to join the community then feel free to subscribe as it would be absolutely lovely to have you here. If you want to see more Stellaris then make sure to tell me down in the comment section by shouting yay. However if you don't see another Stellaris video then make sure to say nay and also give me a recommendation as to what game or cheesy exploit you want to see next. Thank you as always to my lovely patrons who make all of these wonderful videos possible. You guys are absolutely majestic. Thank you very much. And if you would like a video to watch next then I strongly recommend this one on screen now. Trust me, if you've enjoyed this one, you're going to like it as well. Anyway, I've been the Spiffing Brit and I'll see all of you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Oh, and make sure to go refill that cup of tea again.